Kong Pham. He's one of the world's most successful YouTubers. He turned his passion for viral video into multiple seven and eight figure startups. So we were making at our peak, I want to <laughs> say like three million a year, 2.5 yeah. million a year, something like that. Yeah. He started off with a concept that blew up on YouTube. Let's talk to girls using crazy pickup lines and funny costumes. That turned into five plus channels racking up billions of views. I got Kong on the Amtasia podcast to discuss his insane life story and what he learned from his career making viral videos. For his first YouTube channel, Simple Pickup, Kong had to talk to hundreds of women. So in the second half of the interview, we talked about dating tips and what he learned from all those years running that channel. Okay, so you've been doing the Simple Pickup stuff. Like you're pretty much a dating expert in a way, would you say? Sure, sure. Yeah. What, what was like the most interesting thing you discovered about, you know, women and dating in those years you were doing like simple pickup? So by the end of the interview, things went for a turn as we both got deep into exploring our emotions, something that I didn't expect from my interview with Colin. Stay tuned because this one was amazing. And I purposefully went over our usual time because Kong was such an interesting guest. All right, so I am here with Kong Pham, who's had 1 billion plus YouTube views, multiple successful YouTube channels, and you were also a Y Combinator CEO with Jump Cut, and now you're doing a new project, Blue Yam. Is that pretty accurate? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. That was a very <laughs> succinct and good summary. The best I've ever heard. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... There's so much to cover, and I the way I wanted to do this interview was kind of step by step, like the different eras mm -hmm. that you that you've been in, yeah. right? And I think we just want to start from the very beginning, like when you first started uh, doing YouTube. Yeah. Like where were you? Like just let's paint the picture of like who you mm -hmm. were, where were you, and everything like that. Yeah, I was in college and uh, trying to figure out a way to drop out. <laughs> and right. um, we're, you know, just thinking about what what businesses I want to start and uh, tried a few. One of them was, well, one it, it wasn't a business, but one of them was to become like a professional poker player. Okay. Um, so I was playing poker for quite a while. Then they shut down, you know, the U.S. banned it and, you know, they call it Black Friday, I believe. Yeah. So um, that kind of went down the drain, right? Um, started like a t-shirt company, started to cut like a book selling company. None of them really took, I made like a little bit of money here and there. None of them really took off though. And um, at one point, you know, I was, I, I, I noticed that I was watching more YouTube than I was watching movies or TV. And uh, these people were making money off of YouTube because at that point they had just launched their partner program. And I said, you know what? Why don't, it was me and my roommates at the time. I said, why don't we just fucking start a YouTube channel? Right. Like that sounds really fun and we can make it about whatever we like. So we decided to make one. We were really into uh, like dating and pickup at the time. Right. This is after the, the book, the game came out and we were like super like, all right, let's change ourselves for the better. Let's make, make us better men. Let's try to get women. Like let's try to get dates. And uh, you know, we turned that into a channel essentially. So um, it was called simple pickup and we would try to get girls numbers using cheesy pickup lines. Um, we had various themes. One time we did it in a wheelchair. We did it like in a fat suit to prove that, you, you know, the weight stuff doesn't matter. Um, so it was kind of just a fun way to incorporate what we were basically already doing in our lives, but, you know, trying to make a living off of it. Right. And then how did, did you think that was a realistic goal? Because did you think that you were going to like monetize using like AdSense and all that? We did not really know what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just kind of like, we know we can make money. I don't really know how much, uh -huh. you know, there were some people who kind of made blog posts about it. So we had like a rough idea, but right. we really went into it. Like just saying, all right, let's just do something fun and let's see if we make money off of this. And then at what point did you realize like, Oh, this is a real business. Basically at that time, it wasn't like right now where anyone can just apply to, to get monetized. It was a mm -hmm. very long process where, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was really hard to get a part, like the, to, to get monetized. So after we made like three or four videos, the Fine Brothers actually reached out to us mm. and they were going to start their own MCN 
at that point, which is like a network of channels. Think about like, right. you know, uh, Maker Studios or BuzzFeed kind of does the same thing, but they were going to make their own. And they said, why don't you partner with us? Because we can actually monetize you through our, through our, uh, through the back end of our uh, content management system. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to get us monetized really quickly. And within the first month we made like, I don't know exactly how much, but it was, uh, it was a good amount for college students, right? right. Let's say it was like 2,000 2, or 3,000, something like that. Damn, so it's 3,000 divided by like three people. But that was like your first month in business, pretty much, right? Yeah, don't quote me on the numbers there. Yeah. But it, it was a lot for a college student, but like, not like a, you know, insanely right. crazy amount or anything like that. Gotcha, you know? gotcha. So it was enough for you guys to kind of survive. And then was was that right away you could kind of survive off that money? Um. Survive, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, I wouldn't say it was, you know, we weren't like living the life or anything like that right. until probably a year and a half, two years in. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So a year and a half in, you started making like pretty serious money with it. Well, we were, well, we also had like a different website where we were teaching guys dating. So okay. um, we would bring people on boot camps and, uh, you know, take them out into the real world to like, you know, these guys are very, very introverted, very shy, right. can't get dates. So we would take them out into the real world, out to bars, and then help them, you know, meet women and get dates. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, took our business to uh, a, a, another level because each person was paying, I believe, $2,000 for a weekend. Okay. And uh, we took we took up to three people. So we were making, you know, at our peak, like $6,000 a weekend. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Like during the dating boot camp stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then we said, okay, well, we're limited to only three people mm -hmm. for this. Why don't we create an online course where we can reach everybody? Right. Because there's mm -hmm. a lot of people who want to take it, who wanted to learn, but they can't fly out to LA. Right. So then we started an online course where we, you know, taught everything that we knew. Um, it was more informational, whereas the YouTube channel was informational, but also yeah. mostly entertainment. So um, that took off. And uh, that's when, you know, yeah. I would say we, that's when I would say we made it big. It like that was a that. subscription business, right? Yep. That was like a, like a, whatever it was like 20 month, $20 a month. So yeah. Yeah. We, it started out with, uh, it actually started out at $5 a month. I $5 believe. a month. Yeah. Yeah. And then eventually we, we made it, uh, $37 a month was, okay. uh, was the, 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 the peak. Gotcha. And then launched a lot of other products on the, uh, gotcha. along, along the way. And then well. you're pretty transparent with your numbers, right? Like you were like, cause I, th I think in your other interviews, you were basically making like over seven figures to, for this, right? When, during this era. Yeah, yeah. So we were making at our peak. Jeez, I, I, I should know these numbers, but I want to <laughs> say like 3 million a year, 2.5 yeah. million a year, something like that. Yeah, yeah 3 million a year. This was like two years into the business, pretty much. Two uh, or three. No, no. The three, one, one, the 3 million was like five years into the okay, business. Okay, five years into the business. I, I want to say maybe four, something like that. Yeah, and but two years into the business is when we launched the online product. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. And then that's when you started making like pretty Don't quote decent. me on all of these timelines, yeah, yeah, by yeah, the way, because yeah. <laughs> someone's going to be like, no, he didn't. He's a liar. They did it three years after. This is approximate. Yeah, my, yeah, my yeah. Memory, all, my yeah, memory's all approximate, junk right now. For sure, for sure. But so basically within two years though, or like within a certain amount of time, you were already making the seven figures or like close to that, something like that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say probably in year three, we made seven figures. Gotcha. I want to say. Yeah. And how crazy was that to you? Because because I know you had that history of when you were younger, you didn't have much money growing up, right? Yeah. I, I saw that in your bio and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then how crazy was it? Like, like holy shit, three years, we're making like seven figures. Uh, <laughs> it was pretty crazy, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I remember being, uh, I remember just being able to, to buy my mom a car. Right. And because she and my dad were sharing a car and then uh -huh. they were like fighting. So I was just like, I'll just buy you a car. Right. And that was like the first time that, you, you know, it sounds materialistic, but it's, that was like the first time where money solved a problem for me. Right. Where I was able to use money to solve a problem. Yeah. So it's like people say money can't buy happiness, but it definitely fucking helps. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So then they didn't need to share a car anymore yeah. and they started, you know, not, not fighting as much. Yeah, um, totally. And I thought that was really powerful because I was like, damn, I grew up in, you know, basically Section 8 housing, yeah. government funded housing. And now I'm at a point where I can literally just like we literally went out to the dealership and bought it within two hours. Right. And it wasn't even like a big deal. And then besides that, you were also 
pretty good with women at this point, right? Because you were doing the simple pickup stuff yeah. full time. Yeah. So were you guys just hooking up with tons of chicks at this point also? To be honest, not really. <laughs> oh, no? Um, yeah. I mean, I think that there were phases yeah. where, where, where I, I did that, but... I would say most of the time I was working, man. Like yeah. I just for for me, like people watch the videos and they're like, "Man, this guy must get late <laughs> every night." It's like, <laughs> no, I actually spend most of my time working. Right. Um. So again, there were kind of like some weeks here and there where I would I became like a party boy and yeah. you know went out on vacation and 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 went you know went crazy. But I would say most of the time yeah. I was just focused on hustling and like you know just yeah furthering my career. Gotcha. No, totally. So if you weren't going out and like hooking up with a lot of chicks, like, isn't that what your business was? Like you just, you had that, you know, you're teaching other people how to do it. Right. So, so. on the, yeah, yeah. I think on the surface, um, it was, it, don't get me wrong. I was doing it right like, enough. You were doing it enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like on the weekends I would for sure go out and, you know, right. Pick try up to meet people. Um, but it wasn't like I was doing it every single day, 24 seven. Gotcha. Um, but with that said, I don't, you know, the the surface layer of it is that yeah sure I'm teaching these guys how to get dates and how to get eventually get laid or get a girlfriend right but like really what I'm teaching them is how to be confident in themselves right like that's really the core of what I'm teaching them mm -hmm. so you know you could teach that to somebody in a variety of ways these guys just happen to find me through the dating kind of I guess niche mm -hmm. um to, to to build their confidence and then was it pretty much with with y'all three um, people in the business was everyone kind of doing the same thing, like mostly working on the business and not necessarily as much going out. Some people worked more than others. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> some people, some people were more focused on picking up chicks. Some people worked more than others. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. What was life like at that point? Like, what was your day to day like? I know you had to go out and pick up chicks for the YouTube videos and stuff, but like, what was like a typical like week for you? You know what's funny though? I'll yeah. tell you a secret. So at the beginning, we were like, when we were getting girls' numbers, we were, so for example, we would do something like Miley Cyrus pickup lines, right? right. And we would use her lyrics as pickup lines or like Pokemon yeah. pickup lines. So we would go up to them, start a conversation, throw in the line, and then like talk to them more yeah. um, and then get their number. And each interaction took like, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes, uh -huh. like a successful one. Toward the end of it, like two years in, I just remember like coming up with this concept where I was like, you know what? Let's just try to make this really easy. I'm literally going to go up to them, say the line I need to say, and then ask them for their number. And surprisingly, <laughs> every, like it works so well. Like just a ton of people were just like, oh yeah, yeah sure. Here you go. Because it was just like it was such a weird <laughs> thing for them that they, I, I think they just thought it was so funny that they're like, yeah. all right, I'm, I'll, I'll give this guy a chance. <laughs> No, I remember like watching your videos and I was thinking like, man, if these guys can can pick up girls doing this, like, man, it should be easy for us. Yeah, yeah. So it, it literally came <laughs> right? down to like the interactions were no longer than a minute. Yeah. And we so we used to take like two days just to film an episode, maybe right. three days. Uh -huh. Now we were filming like two episodes in a day. Oh, wow. It was so crazy. And, and, and that was a realization I had where it was just like, you know, you think that you have to do all these things to... Uh -huh you know, impress a girl or, or get them to be interested in you. But a lot of times it's just being confident with yourself and having fun with it. And you'd be right. surprised of, uh, you'd be surprised at how well they react to that. So yeah. I would literally just go up to, to someone and, and while we're filming and, um, say something like, uh, um, I don't know. What's Miley Cyrus line party in the, like, party in the USA. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. um, you know, guys like me, I love to party in the USA <laughs> and she'd be like, Cool. Like, not even say hi or anything. She'd be like, cool. Like, all right, can I have your number? I think you're cute. And then she'd <laughs> she be like, yeah, sure, here you go. It's so crazy, That's man. so funny, dude. Yeah. And I was like, oh what my God. on earth is going on? I was like, we spent so much time on, on this before. This is all you needed to do? Dude, that's so crazy. Like, because I've gone out and tried to pick up girls. I feel like it's harder than that, No. Well, or, or, okay, so <laughs> getting the number is very easy. Okay. Um, following up and actually getting the date, that's yeah. a different story. Gotcha. Succeeding on the date, now that's, you know, that's another story as well. Right. So getting the number is like the easiest thing you can do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, it's not like every single one of the, <laughs> those girls like would want to sleep with me, right? Right. They were just saying, all right, <laughs> I'm going to give them a chance to win right. me over later. How many of those girls on your uh, videos were you actually like hitting up? remember toward the beginning a lot <laughs> but yeah. like once once the, the the channel started to pick up yeah um only the cool ones 
Only the cool ones. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. the ones that I felt a connection with, I would yeah. follow up. Yeah. Yeah. And then did, because you guys got pretty famous at one point, right? Mm. Would, would you say that that helped you at all? Or, or not really with the dating? Not really, because they did not know who we were. So it's mostly most, dudes. Yeah, it's mostly dudes watching yeah. our content. Right. Um, so, but when they did know, then it did help. Yeah. Right. Because you're like, here, Cause, check out our YouTube, and then they'll see. That's your YouTube, right? And then the clout kind of helps in a way, no? Um, not if you do it like that. Well, I never really did it like that. Yeah. I just don't like doing that. Um, it just seems like kind of douchey to me. <laughs> but the best is when it happens organically. So, oh. for example, you know, I was on I was on a date with this girl. And she took a, a video f- uh, of us um, for, like, her Instagram story or Snapchat yeah. or something like that. And then her friends recognized me and was like, are you hanging out with Kong <laughs> from Simple Pickup? Yeah. And so during that dinner, she was like, what? How does he know you? <laughs> so then that that's that's when I think it was the most powerful, when it happens organically. Yeah. I Did think when you, when, you know, when I come and if I come up and just brag to them about it, they're like, okay, cool, nice. <laughs> yeah. But did that ever cock block you, though? Because was it ever yeah, like, sometimes. oh, this guy's just like out here just picking up everyone? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Gotcha. It happens. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, yeah I, I think, you know, like for me, if a girl's not down, she's not down. Like, right. I'm not, I'm not going to stress over it. Yeah, so you guys got recognized pretty often then during this era, right? Yeah. Like you went out, you would be like kind of recognized by dudes, right? Mm-hmm. By dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By they'd, dudes be like, yeah. they'd be like, oh, hey, Kong. Uh-huh. How how much of a trip was that? It was pretty, that crazy, pretty crazy, man. Yeah, uh, there, it was. Uh, at one point, it, you know, I I loved it in the sense that a lot of these people are coming up to me and saying yeah. like, um, "Hey, you really changed my outlook on mm, life. You yep. gave me more confidence." A lot of these pe- people were st- told me they were suicidal, right? And you know, I gave them kind of like a glimmer of hope. Um, so I, I think that's very powerful, and I, I and I love that. Yeah. What I don't like is when people are like super weird oh yeah in various ways so a lot of times you know i'll I'll, I'll hear them like talking like is that is that him is that him (laughs) while i'm while i'm eating so now i'm just like all right well i'm eating with my mom and there's these people like looking at me it's like either (laughs) say hi or don't do anything (laughs) (laughs) so that so that that got a little bit annoying and then sometimes like you know people would just because you know they they saw our videos they felt like they had permission to do weird shit to us. Oh, so, yeah. you know, I'll be eating with my friends and some guy comes up and it's like, hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? <laughs> I was like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? It's just, yeah. yeah. So that, that got a little bit annoying. But I would say most of the time it, it was it was great and it was very, um, yeah. it was very heartwarming. No, no, no. Yeah, for sure. I bet it's like, it's because I got recognized once too for this podcast and my <laughs> oh, podcast really? isn't even that big. Right. Uh, and then when I got recognized, I was like, holy crap, this is crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just because it just felt like kind of good. But <laughs> what? So one of one of my friends that uh, I invited here to, to to your party. Yeah. Um, was like, oh, is that Kevin from Amped Asia podcast? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I listened to that podcast. Dude, that's hilarious. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. No, like Small random world. people like recognize me. But in the podcast is not that big. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's like, it's such a small channel, Yeah. yeah. but it's just like every time, like a little, someone like recognized me, I'm like, holy crap. Mm-hmm. It's, but I, I, I'm assuming with you guys, cause you guys have millions of uh, subscribers that it just got like, it was like a common occurrence. Yeah. Yeah. Much, it was, right? uh, yeah. At, at, at our peak, it was, it was like, you can't go out into a bar <laughs> without like somebody. You're like a, you ce- you're basically a celebrity. Yeah. Which kind of made me feel, um, you know, it, it, it kind of made me empathize for, for actual celebrities because right. we were only a fraction of what, like, right. you know, uh, Johnny Depp would get if he w- walked yeah. into a bar. He can't uh, even go out. Really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But then now, you're are you pretty incognito now? Like, are you still getting recognized quite I'm still, a bit? I'm still getting recognized, yeah. but not as much. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, because basically with Simple Pickup, you kind of stopped that channel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? What, what was the impetus for stopping the channel? I mean, I think um, once you do something so many times, you just want to do more things. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's kind of where my mindset was at, where it was like, all right, you know, we kind of mastered this whole like YouTube thing and dating thing, but I don't want to be 30 years old, like getting girls numbers on a college campus. (laughs) Like, I was just like, yeah. There's, there has to be something more for me out there. Right. I think I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish with Simple Pickup. Totally. Yeah. 
Totally. But then you also had a few other channels too. Like you had multiple channels, not just simple pickup, right? Yeah, yeah. And then what happened to those? So it was just a business model thing. So we were essentially becoming a BuzzFeed. You know how mm -hmm. they have a bunch of different channels? Right. So we started, you know, Hacks of Life, Random Altruist, um, uh, Human Experiment, and uh, all of these channels got really decent views. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have a business model to... The business model that we set up for it was not good. So with BuzzFeed, the way they make money is sponsors come in and they say, hey, you know, this video is brought to you by XYZ. We didn't want to do that because I hate working with, 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 with brands. It's just super annoying. Um, and I didn't want to spend the rest of my life doing that. So we said, all right, instead of doing like that, we're going to sell, you know, merch and also send them to like some various courses that we're going to make as well. Um, turns out, that did not do very well because the channel didn't really match with the things that we were trying to sell. Um, on top of that, we had some talent issues as well. So once talent gets really big, then they demand a bunch of shit from you. So it's like now, okay, we're, we're back at square one with this, you know, I, I won't say any names, but let's say, uh, let's say Kevin, you know, is the star of our show. Now he wants to get paid triple. And I'm just like, but we're not even making money off of your channel. You know, we're <laughs> so yeah. that happened and we're just like, I, we can't deal with this. Let's, let's just yeah. call it quits. Yeah. The talent thing is interesting because that's what happened to like, call her daddy. Right. Like in yeah, exactly. other ones yeah. where it's like, once your talent gets to a certain level, then they just start, it's, it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You just start demanding more and more. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, that sucks. But then could, didn't you have, so every channel had its own star essentially. Is that what it was? Yeah. Like every, yeah. Yeah. Then it would like, did you have contracts and stuff that just said like, Hey, you're not going to get, you're going to get this amount or how did it go? You know? Yeah. Yeah. We had contracts, but, um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like right. if they don't want to do it, they're not going to do it or yeah, they're just going to quit. So you're like, you're at the mercy of the talent at, at that point. So yeah, there, those were like probably the top two things that, that went wrong with that, but there were some other problems too. Um, mm -hmm. but either way, you know, it was a success in terms of, we got a ton of views but um, it just didn't make sense as a business to continue with that model. And that's when you started doing jump cut. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So jump cut. So explain what jump cut was. Yeah. So jump cut, the original idea was to create um, really compelling courses. Like the world of online courses is really boring. Right. Right. If you watch a course, it's a dude with a PowerPoint and that's it. So the goal with jump cut was to create courses that were actually really fun to watch mm -hmm. that felt like, you know, uh, uh, in a nutshell, if I don't know if, who, who watches, if anyone watches that channel, it's like an animation channel uh -huh. um, or like Vsauce to make education really fun and compelling. And so um, that was the original goal. Our kind of breakout success was uh, this course called Viral Academy, where we taught people how to how to make YouTube videos, um, how to be how to create a viral channel. And um yeah, so we, we had that kind of concept, went through Y Combinator, mm -hmm. got, uh, I want to say $200,000 from them or 150, yeah. no, 125, sorry, 125K mm -hmm. from them. And then um, raised a seed round of about $2 million um, mm -hmm. from investors. And then uh, we were on our way. Um, right. So that was kind of the business. Uh, unfortunately, what we found out is that when you create a course like Viral Academy, nobody really cares. Like, they want the information. Mm -hmm. Nobody really cares that it's entertaining. Right. So if I had to go back in time, what, what I would have done is create courses for things that people have to learn but don't want to, like mm -hmm. algebra, for example, oh, or interesting. chemistry or physics, right? Whereas this is something that people voluntarily want to learn. Yeah. So they're just like, give me the information and help me succeed. I don't care about anything else. Gotcha. But why was that a negative, though? Um, right. Because we spent a ton of money on, on oh, production gotcha. yeah, that we didn't need to spend. Okay, I see, yeah. I see. And then you did the same thing with, like, because you had multiple courses. Yeah. So you were yeah. just spending a lot of money on the courses, like creating the courses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Gotcha. So we had this one course, uh, Art of the Startup, with Justin Kahn, who sold mm -hmm. Twitch for a billion dollars. We spent, right. like, 500K making that course. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. 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 But then you guys, but you guys were making a lot, though, right, at one point with Jump Cut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think at our, at our peak... Um, was it 2018? I, yeah. I, I would say it was 2018. We made, uh, we did 12 million in revenue. Right. Um, with about, with about half of that approximately being profit. Okay. Yeah. And then it made just. a little bit like 40% of that. Right. And then what happened there? It just, you couldn't keep it going after that, after 2018? Well, um, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's the same 
thing that happens with everybody, right? Once you, yeah. Because at the beginning, it's easy to acquire customers by running ads, which we right. did. We ran ads fucking everywhere. <laughs> right. No, people, I saw your ads. People everywhere. were recognizing me because I was in the ad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at one point, it just becomes real. Like once you get everybody who wants the product, then it becomes really expensive to get everybody else. And then that's when you have to do like affinity marketing, where people know your brand and trust it. Like Nike and Apple, for example. You know, they're not running ads telling people, "Hey, go buy our shoes." Yeah. They're d- running ads to like get people to emp- or not empathize, but to to identify with the brand yeah. in, in for for its certain qualities, and then say, "All right, now today I need a new shoe. I'm gonna go get a Nike." Um, but we just yeah, we just never got to that point. So then it just scaled back. So you were at like the 12 million, and then it scaled back to like a number, right? Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah, basically. So now we're kind of just coasting and uh, making, um, we're, we're still running ads, but very, very low volume. Mm, yeah, so that's okay. just kind of like a side business now. That You couldn't just keep it going, like even at a just a little higher volume? Or are you just literally maxed out on all your ads right now? Um, we basically, we saturated the audience. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. Damn, that's, that's crazy that you can do that. Because you would think the YouTube stuff would be like a pretty big audience. A lot of people want to be YouTubers, no? Yeah, yeah, but how many of those people want to pay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. So right. That's, that's, the, that's the issue. That's the problem. Okay. So to, to get into that, so Jump Cut, essentially, you, you taught people how to become YouTubers, right? That was the, the idea behind um, that course. Yeah. And then do you <clears throat> think that apply like everything that in that course, does that still apply today? Or is it like very different now? Um, yeah, it still applies today. The main thing is just you just like people over make it overly complicated right. on how to like make a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty simple. Right. Like the main thing is you just copy people. <laughs> <laughs> like you literally just copy okay. what works, but you add your own twist to it. So it's not like a hundred percent copy. Right. But you copied ninety percent of it and then you add your own twist to it. So right. you know, for example, when people say like, Oh, I wanna make like, uh, uh, there was this guy that make, makes like woodworking. Okay. You know, he, he's, he, he does, he works with wood and, um, he was making like really crazy furniture pieces uh-huh. out of it. And, um, actually, no, I'll give you a, a, a better example. Okay. Um, um, the icing artist, um, who's really, really huge now, uh, went through our program and at the beginning she was doing like baking tutorials Okay. So it's like, all right, how to make this cake, add one cup of this, add one teaspoon of this. And um, I told her, that's nobody, like, nobody wants to do that. Just just take, like, copy, uh, who was it? Ro- Rosanna Pansino, I think is her name. Uh-huh. Basically, she makes, like, she bakes stuff, like mm-hmm. cupcakes and cookies and stuff. But she adds, like, a theme to it. Okay. It's usually a gaming theme, right? So she'll make, like... Minecraft cookies oh, or like or like uh, Harry Potter cupcakes. But so, that's similar to what Simple Pickup was, right? Yeah, Simple, you had dude, yeah, Simple Pickup was just, we literally just copied, like, first off, we copied Cass G for our, our uh, interview series. Oh, and then yeah. for our, our pickup series, we just copied, like, prank channels. Right. But we did it not necessarily as a prank, but more as, like, a pickup thing. Right. Um, but, yeah, anyway, so so with, with Lori, the IC artist, we just said, Look, just copy Rosanna Pansino. I'm I'm so sorry if I'm getting her name wrong. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> She's like, it's not Rosanna, it's Rosania. <laughs> um uh and then just do it with cakes. Right. So um I mean that's not the only kind of inspiration we got from, but that's essentially what the, the conversation was. And ever since she did that, she you know, the channel just blew up. Gotcha. Gotcha. So cause with simple pickup, right? Because you guys had edgier content. Mm-hmm. You guys had sort of like you guys had like a guy or a girl like on a vi- like a vibrating like thing, right? <laughs> yeah, for charity. And for charity. For right? charity. Like <laughs> that's the most important part. It was for charity. <laughs> for charity. Yeah, but like that stuff is not no longer monetizable, right? Or it was it, never monetizable. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Was never. Yeah, a lot of those videos just like YouTube just yeah. took off the monetization to it as soon as we uploaded. Gotcha. It. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so it was never monetizable. Okay, so. Is that kind of also the reason why you stopped doing that content? Because it was just too hard to monetize it or not really? No, no, no. Okay. It was, it's the same as what I said before, which was, you know, we were doing it for so long that I wanted to do something you know, bigger. Yeah. The entrepreneur in me was just like, yeah, aiming for the stars. Because, but the other thing is like the algorithm. It, hasn't that changed to like deprioritize like stuff that's like too sexual or stuff like that? Um. Yeah. Somewhat, somewhat. Um, they they definitely 
they definitely have gotten better at kind of catching those things. Um, but I don't know if it's so, so it's definitely not going to, it's definitely harder to monetize those. Um, but in terms of getting like views, uh, you can still do that pretty easily. Cause there's some channels I follow that are very, very, but e- like even Joe Rogan, I don't know. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I love Joe Rogan. I still listen to yeah. his podcast from time to time, but he talks about some, some crazy, crazy shit. stuff. That's not, but, yeah, but he was super huge on YouTube. Yeah. Like humongous still is. Right. Okay. So the algorithm is still okay with like stuff that's a little controversial. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. like monetize it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's the issue is like when mm-hmm. you start talking about like at one point, if you say they don't, mo- they, they strip you, you strip you of your monetization. So gotcha. everybody started saying like the illness or yeah. the vid or something like that to try to get yeah. around it. Cause like, wasn't there a, like some kind of like ad apocalypse or something that happened that made it so that those channels, they couldn't make money. Or, or stuff like that. Yeah, there was a bunch of, there was like a few adpocalypses that happens. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's just like, you just gotta, you just gotta evolve your, ch- either. Yeah. So I always tell people, don't just depend on ad revenue from the videos. Also create your own like revenue, ad, revenue stream. Yeah, on, on, on other platforms. So that could be selling on like course like mm-hmm. we did or um, Patreon, yeah. um, merch. Like there's so many things you can do. If you're just relying on, on AdSense, like that's, yeah. You're, yeah, you're 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 gonna eventually get killed. So that's not a reliable source, no matter what. Basically, like yeah, you always you have to get the new yeah, exactly, exactly income streams. Yeah, in you, this is even applies to like the big YouTubers, right? I would assume. Yeah, hundred percent. Even like like David Dobrik, like he doesn't even do ads. I don't think he does like uh, sponsored know. posts. I don't. I don't. I, I haven't watched him for a while, but yeah, yeah. Like at one point, uh, YouTube took monetization away from all of Jake Paul's videos for like a year or something like that. Oh, or was it Logan Paul? Yeah. Like they'll do that. They'll do shit like Probably. that. Yeah. Yeah. But then they have merch and all that stuff to like, yeah, they don't give it. a shit. Logan, yeah, they're making Logan made a money, shit ton dude. of money from the Mayweather <laughs> fight. So he doesn't. <laughs> so, so, okay. So back to the core stuff, right? Um, or back to jump cut and the YouTube stuff. So you copy these channels. How do you get that initial traction? Would you say like, what's, let's say you do like have a copy like, is it just from the algorithm or is there like specific tactics you would use to get like the initial traction? Yeah, there's, def- there, there's definitely tactics you can use. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you have to work really hard at the beginning. Right. Once you're, once you get like regular views, I'd say like if you're getting over a thousand views on the regular, then mm-hmm. you can let the algorithm do its work and it'll eventually promote you to more and more people. Right. Um, but at the beginning, there's a lot of things you can do like um, posting your, your video on Reddit. Mm -hmm. on certain like smaller subreddits right you know don't post it to the big ones you're never going to get to the front page but maybe you can get to the front page of r slash you know like really like acoustic guitars or something like yeah um i don't know whatever your niche is so you could do that facebook groups um smaller blogs and what you're trying to do here is like just get you know every day you can just get like two subscribers Mm -hmm. um you keep building that up until at one point you get regular views Gotcha. But with that said, I always tell people the hard part is not getting the views. The hard part is making good content, mm. right? Like if you get, if you make good, if you make good content, then the views will eventually come. Right. But if you make shitty content, no matter how much growth hacking you do, like yeah. you're not, you're not going to be successful. Yeah. And that's hard because a lot of people think their content is good. Oh, they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like there's so many people who make these videos and yeah. they think that, oh, this is the best video ever, but like yeah. it really isn't. Like but, how do you even judge that? Yeah. Yeah. You I know? mean, I think that's just part of the process. Um, yeah. I always tell people, um, I always tell people, send it to, send it to a few friends and family. And if they're responding to it with, not, maybe not family. They don't really know. But send it to people <laughs> who understand that type of content. Right. And if they're responding to you with like a bunch of exclamation marks and a bunch of like caps lock, that's when you know you got something good. Yeah. But uh, until then, you probably don't. Yeah. I think for me, right, like my YouTube channel is very small, but like recently with the recent videos, like I've been getting more traction. Like I've been noticing people have been like sharing it and stuff. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. like even like friends will be like, oh yeah, like I saw your podcast and stuff. I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. that's kind of like how I know I'm like on the right track. Yeah. So, but. But plus also like you just have to watch a lot. Like you can't be good unless you know what's good in the first place. Right. So you just have to watch a ton of content too. Yeah. So a lot of people are just like, okay, they watch one channel and then they try to make a YouTube channel themselves. I'm like, no, you got to watch a shit ton of videos, yeah. understand what's good, what's not. And then you can compare yours to everybody else's. 
Right. I think, yeah, that is key. Because I've been, like, like imagine me, someone trying to write a book who's never read a book or who doesn't read books. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no, totally. I think for me, I've been listening to, like, a ton of different podcasts, and that helps a lot with uh, making making better podcasts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um. So, yeah, no, that's awesome. So, I guess, like, what, okay, so let's say once you pass that initial stage, right? Because you guys were pretty big right away, no? Or um, how did... Yeah, yeah. So how did, like, how did that come about? So the first video was called Asian Penis Pickup. Right. <laughs> Where I would just, like, use the word penis casually in conversation. Yeah. Um, uh, or, like, variations of the word penis. Right. Um, and uh, we promoted that, I believe, on the bodybuilding forum. The bodybuilding forum. Okay. Yeah, the MISC section. Yeah. You know about that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... There's this forum that's like it's for it's for like lifting weights right. for everybody that doesn't, doesn't know. But there's a misc section where like it's just craziness, <laughs> like anything goes there. So we made a post on there, and then um, we artificially upvoted it ourselves. <laughs> and uh, once yeah, once that happened, and like made some like funny comments and stuff. And then yeah. once we did that, because the content was actually good for at least for this audience everybody else started upvoting it up and responding as well. I don't think it was upvoting. I think at, at that time it was just like re responses. So if you get a yeah. lot of responses, it goes to the top. Right. Yeah. And you could do the same with like Reddit, for example. Reddit's different because they have upvotes right. um, and they have a different algorithm. But this was, I believe, just like a linear, like if you respond, it goes to the top. Oh, okay. So yeah. we just got a ton of responses and it kept going to the top. Yeah. Okay. So, and then that, like how many views did that get? Do you remember? Like 100,000. 100,000. Like yeah. Oh, just from posting it on the bodybuilding forum? Um, well, I'm sure it got shared at other places too, but gotcha. I think that was the main one that, that that hit it big, yeah. And it was like just sharing. It was basically the virality factor of it getting shared on Facebook and Twitter and whatever too that helped it, right? That yeah, was, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not really... I, I'm sure I can look at, look at the analytics somewhere, but probably right. the majority of it came from bodybuilding forum. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, so straight And then I'm sure the algorithm did something too. Like, I'm sure, gotcha. okay, they saw, YouTube saw, oh, it was blowing up. Let's share, let's show it to like X number of people. Isn't that, isn't that a little rare nowadays? Like, it's hard to get like your first video to blow up like that, would you say? Or or what do you think? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's always been hard. Always but been hard, I think, yeah. I think if you create something that is viral, and you do just a little bit of promotion for it, mm -hmm. it will get there. It will. So get there, yes, yeah. it is hard in the sense that it's hard to come up with that concept and actually make it. Mm -hmm. But if you have a good concept, like you don't, you people don't understand. You don't actually need to do that much work to grow it. Gotcha. The hard part is, is making the content that is shareable in the first place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So, so you, with the pranks speci uh, specifically, it's harder now to do prank channels, right? Or is it... Because, like, a lot of this stuff has been kind of done now. Yeah, it's been done. And then also people just started faking stuff. So right. it's just like... <laughs> you, can't, you can't compete with that. But I'll, but I'll tell you, there's there's been, I think, a rise in wholesome pranks oh, recently. Oh, interesting. Yeah, pranks where it's like it makes you feel good. Oh. So um, that's, been, that's been, been pretty big on Reddit in the past, like, couple of years where it's like, you know, uh, some guy would just throw a squirt gun at a stranger and then they'll, they'll like shoot each other with a water gun. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, or like random pillow fights, you know, he'll yeah. give a pillow to someone and then they'll have random pillow fights. Like that just, it's like feel good prank content. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So just like another take on the prank like genre. Yeah. Is, is yeah, good. exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. So from that, okay. So that first video that you did, um, what was the next steps for you guys? Like, was it just like, Hey, I'm, we're just going to start cranking out videos. Um, you mean after that first yeah, one? Yeah, after that first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, all right, we got something good. Mm -hmm. Um, let's just keep going on with this. So then the second video we made was like, I want to say it was like nerds pick mm. up girls. We dressed up like, or like maybe clowns, something like that. We dressed yeah. up really weird, like <laughs> super ugly, just to prove that you don't, it doesn't matter what you wear. Right. Um, and uh, and then we got girls' numbers that way. And then the third one, I think, was the one that blew up the most, which was StarCraft pickup lines. Oh, interesting. So StarCraft at that time was... There, there was a lot of, like, StarCraft memes. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I think StarCraft 2 was coming out. Either way, it, it was, like, a, a big topic at the time with, like, nerds. Right. So we just used... Uh, 
StarCraft like quotes and then use them as pickup lines. <laughs> Do you and think- that one like got got I think a million. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Do you think like this approach would work today? Like everything that you like you did back then or a similar approach? Yeah, you would just have to like be very uh unique or something. No, 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 no. You uh, I think I think it would it, it would work. You just have to be a little bit more you can't do the exact same thing. Right. Because then otherwise it's just like, all right, I've I've already seen this. You can't do the exact same simple pickup stuff. Like nerds pick up girls. You have to do something different. I think you would have to do something even more different than than yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean I'm sure I'm sure it'll work to some extent. Yeah. But um probably not to the yeah to the extent that we, we found success. Gotcha. Because after we did that, then a ton of people started doing it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like the whole pickup thing is now just it's like it's saturated. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's just a lot of um like prank style pickup too right that yeah you noticed yeah mm-hmm. yeah so also a lot of them are fake oh yeah it's like that I bet. D- you know that guy that like i forgot i forgot his name but um he, he'll pick he'll be like rock paper scissors with me and then if you oh, lose oh yeah if you lose we gotta make out like yeah. it's just so obviously fake but like people <laughs> yeah. people like it man but they're dumb though like the average person's dumb so I they just believe dude, it you know i think they <laughs> i think they know it's fake but they still watch it <laughs> Like, yeah. I think even he admits that it's fake. Oh, he does? Yeah, okay. I, I think so. Yeah. But it's just, like, it's just so entertaining to watch. Right. Yeah. Right. And then, like, at what point... So, okay, this is two years in is when you started doing the boot camps. And that's when you off? started... Huh? Did something just turn off? Oh, I think it's okay. That's that's just that camera. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I saying? So, so, two years in is when you started doing the boot camps. Mm-hmm. And that's when you started really monetizing, essentially, right? I think one year in was de- was we oh, started the doing camps. the boot camps, and then two years in we started doing the online courses. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Year. And then so a year in, you were already like making money then, making decent money, making yeah. decent money, decent money. But yeah. um, it wasn't like we were rich or anything, because because gotcha. it's not like we paid ourselves out, right? Right. We paid ourselves like a the bare minimum. Yeah, yeah, the bare minimum, yeah. and then just invested the rest. Because I remember, I, I think I saw a video from you guys from a long time ago where you were showing like an apartment tour or something, mm-hmm. and then it, you guys were like living in like some really shitty place or something. Oh yeah, yeah. At the beginning, when, <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah, when we were launching those boot camps, we lived in like a shitty place in LA where, yeah. uh, where we all were sharing like there's like, four <laughs> of us sharing two bedrooms basically. Okay. And, uh, and you were still picking up girls and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, that's hilarious. Yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. And then, uh, the water would turn brown every, every morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw that video. I think I saw that video. I was like, holy shit, these guys are poor. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So, <laughs> but then it's crazy. Cause I think the progression, it was like pretty quick. Cause I saw you guys like upgraded to like a better apartment, right? Like in Hollywood at um, one point. Yeah. And then, and then at one point we got like a big house where we all had oh. our own rooms. So that was <laughs> great, but it was still like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't great, but the what then after that is is I think when we all got our own place and mm. you know we were living pretty pretty nicely. And then you collabed with a lot of YouTubers too, right? Does that help? You think? Yeah, I think it helps a lot. Yeah, it helps a shit ton. Um, I remember this one time we collabed with uh, Prank versus Prank. Oh Jesse yeah, Wallens. Yeah, they're huge, or they were. Yeah, yeah, he still right. is right now. Okay. And um, we were, I forgot how many subscribers we had. I want to say it was like we had. 500,000 and then when we did a collab with him we, it went up to like 700 it's like oh, some, wow. something crazy 200,000 like extra subscribers yeah yeah I, I don't remember the exact numbers yeah. but it was just so crazy and we're like oh my gosh that's <laughs> what the hell that's insane yeah 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 did you ever work with like a lot of the mainstream guys like you know like Logan Paul like those guys did you ever like talk to them or anything like that yeah yeah I mean I think everybody's kind of like met each other Oh, okay, gotcha. In, in in the industry, um, so yeah. I've met Logan, but I've never we've never done anything with him. Right, right. Um, mm-hmm. Plus, this was like, this was like years ago. So yeah, I don't he wasn't even... as big. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So okay, interesting, interesting. So after, so now you're doing Blue Yam, yeah, and that's basically an agency, yeah. right? I kind of feel the creator world is very interesting right now. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it seems like that has a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel like you want to get back into being a creator? Oh I'm, yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like how but so? I, but I think I'm going to do something that's more sustainable. Okay. So it's just hard to make like content that doesn't eventually get boring. Right. Right. Like I, I, I made a few episodes just for fun. 
um, like a year ago just to mm-hmm. kind of test the waters. Yeah. Um, it did decently considering I've been gone for like years. But right. um, but the problem is when I was writing it, I just didn't, the first couple felt good because yeah. I had to write out the scripts or at least like a very heavy outline. Yeah. But then by the third one, I was like, this is not fun anymore. Oh, and the fourth one's not fun anymore. So it's it's kind of like, I think long term, I just want to do something that is sustainable and that I would like. Yeah. So maybe something like this, like some podcast. variation of, of this podcast where I'm just talking to people. Right. Um, and like, because I, I just do that for fun anyway, right? right. Like we go out to lunch and then we, we talk. Right. Why not just do it in a podcast? Yeah. And so I think something like that is probably more sustainable or maybe uh, something like um, uh, something like uh, what what the... Oh, geez. I, honestly, I, I forget. I forget. But basically, they react to like videos. Oh, okay. Yeah, they react to funny videos and they do like fun challenges with their friends. And it's gotcha. like you know something like that is something I could just do forever. Because you kind of did that with like one of your channels, right? It was like I forget the name, but it was like pranks. But it was like a the human experiment. People. The human experiment. Yeah. yeah, we made a few videos for that too. Yeah, which is funny because again, this is after like three, four years of no videos. Yeah, we put up the first video. It's called. Uh, it's called. Uh, Trying trying horse cum for the first time. <laughs> or like trying horse semen for the first time. Holy shit. So it was just me and my friends and we're we were literally drinking horse semen. <laughs> um and then and then did you and that video like blew up right away, pretty much? No, it's kind of like a slow burn. Okay. Um, at, at the beginning it got like 30, 40,000 views. Okay. Um because that channel has a lot of subscribers. And everyone's oh, like, what the fuck is this okay. channel? I didn't subscribe to this. Yeah. Um, but uh but now I think it has like 150 200 oh yeah thousand views right? yeah 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 thousand okay cool so you're going back into being a creator um okay let's talk about uh the y combinator experience like can you tell us like was that the right move for you guys oh yeah Get definitely y combinator dude okay. y combinator is like uh, if anyone is doing trying to do a high growth startup i yeah. highly recommend it you're basically put into a three-month program right where every week you, you, you all meet. It's like a hundred different companies, right? Mm-hmm. And these are probably some of the smartest people in the world. Right. So Y Combinator has a lower acceptance rate than Harvard. Mm-hmm. You know, they like to quote that a lot. <laughs> and yeah. so you're, you know, you're getting the best startup founders all in one room, essentially, mm-hmm. who, uh, you know, you have dinner together, you meet one another, you make friends, right? And uh, you help each other out. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, every week we would have a speaker come in that has like a successful founder, mm-hmm. you know, like the CEO of uh, Twil- Twilio came in to talk, uh, the CEO of DoorDash, who also went through Y Combinator. Right. And um, they're just answering, you know, they tell their story, they answer questions and they help you out too. Mm-hmm. So it's just this whole program where you get to meet some of the brightest people in the world, some of the hardest working people in the world. Um, and then at the end of it, you get to pitch to like 800 investors. Right. So it's just... For, for what you give up, like, sep- excuse me, 7%, it's, yeah. it's nothing. It's like it's a nothing. no-brainer. Yeah, it's no, it's a completely a no-brainer. But the hard part is getting in. <laughs> the hard part is getting in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, um, back in 2012, I actually had a startup that um, we got into the interview round for Y Combinator. Mm-hmm. But, um, like, our business was already making, like, 30000 a month back then. And then, so, I guess that's what, like, got us in. But then we couldn't get past the final round because they thought our business wasn't a big enough, like a billion dollar idea. Well, type thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think also, um, the, the way they did it before mm-hmm. they only had a certain amount of money. Right. right? Whereas now there's such a big name that they have a ton of investors. So they have a ton of money mm-hmm. and any startup that shows any decent amount of traction, they'll just bring you in. Really? Cause when did, when did you okay. apply? Like 20, 2012, 2012. Yeah. So back then, Oh, dude, that was like, dude, that was when they started, right? Didn't they start was, in 2010, 20? No, it was like, I think they started in 2007 or something. Okay, but dude, okay. I think I remember like the, that year, like Coinbase was in that like group, dude. Yeah. You yeah. know, like crazy startups. Yeah. But back like then, that. but back then they were probably only taking like 20, 30 startups per batch. Yeah. They right? were only taking, I think that batch was like, like less than a hundred or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our batch was literally like 120. Right. So, or like a hundred, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and then we talked to a bunch of people about our idea or like our thing, which was it was like a Groupon clone, mm-hmm. but it was a Groupon clone for photography, mm-hmm. and it was already making money like within the first few months. 
right? So it was already making like 30K a month. And then um, everyone we talked to was like, oh yeah, this seems like something that would get into YC. Maybe they were like, this idea is good, but the founders suck. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no. <I'm, laughs> actually, the my other co-founder is like doing really, really well now. Oh yeah? Yeah, so we're, do, we're both doing like pretty good. Okay. Um, but he has his own, He has he's the CEO of a different company now. Got it, got it. So I think we're, we're doing good. Um, but yeah, so was raising money the right move? Cause I feel like for your, for like jump cut, that's more of like a lifestyle business almost. No. Well, it didn't start off like that. Right. Now, now it is. Yeah. We've right. Kind of, you know, uh, accepted that. But at the beginning, yeah. you know, we were like in the Silicon Valley mindset. This is after like simple pickup made a ton of money and was still making hella money on the side. Right. Relatively speaking. Right. So I was like, Super confident. I went in there. I was like, I'm going to fucking change the world with this concept, uh, yeah. right? Like typical Silicon Valley mindset. So <laughs> the goal there was, okay, we're going to make, you know, we're going to be like Udemy, which is, you know, multi-billion dollar business. Right. But our courses are actually going to be hella good. Mm -hmm. So um, it'll be more like masterclass, right? Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. Similar to masterclass. I wouldn't say yeah. their courses are entertaining, but they have really good quality and they have celebrity instructors. So that's right. what makes it entertaining. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like a masterclass you to me type of thing. And, yeah. um, and, uh, yeah, that's why we wanted to raise the money. Gotcha. Again, like it took us $500,000 to create that one course. Right. So did you run out of money? Is that also why you like, uh, slowed it down or how did you, you know? were? Yeah. So 2018 was a re really good year for us. We grew, we were, there was like almost a hundred people in our company. It was like 85 people okay. um, in, in the company. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. And then 2019, you know, that's when the market saturated and we just couldn't continue growing. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had to lay everybody off, uh, which was really, really difficult for me, yeah. you know, as like a that's CEO tough. and a founder. Yeah. It's, it's one of the hardest things uh, I've ever had to do. Yeah. Um, but they, uh, but when that happened, we, we, you know, before we laid everybody off, we were burning like, I want to say, fifty thousand dollars seventy thousand dollars a month oh yeah that's a lot something like that yeah that that's a lot but that also doesn't seem like that much either almost well the thing way. is it's not yeah. that much if you're all, if you're growing right so if you're growing and you're burning that much like uber or facebook right, right then it's fine because it's like all right you'll make yeah. money later but we weren't growing you were like declining yeah exactly sales so were just, declining right and um you know our success rate as more people came in, our success rate also was declining as well right. because law of averages. And uh, yeah, we just couldn't raise any more mm -hmm. money. We did raise another round to to do something else. I think we raised about three million. Oh, um, another three? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But So uh, five million total. Yeah, yeah. But I, gotcha. uh, unfortunately, it just didn't pan out to be a high growth company like we wanted it to. How, how does that affect like investors? Like do, do you have to like return money or like how does that work? No. No, you so don't they're just like, they're just like, whatever. Just yeah. Like, cause, cause you got to understand with startup investing, like 90% of your picks, yeah, 95 even are just going to be failures. Right. So, uh, investors understand that. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, there's no, uh, you know, if, if, if we, if we do kind of make a lot of money in the future with mm -hmm. like either the agency or something else, we'll probably slowly pay them back right. just as like a nice gesture, but gotcha. legally you have no obligation to do that. Gotcha. Gotcha. So all of that kind of led you into Blue Yam, which is your current business. Yeah. And then what is, what's Blue Yam exactly? So Blue Yam, we uh, create, so we took kind of, we, we thought about what are we really good at right now, mm -hmm. right? Um, which, and we're like, it's making content. Right. Um, unfortunately with YouTube, not a lot of companies care about YouTube, but they do care about ads. And a lot of people don't know how to do YouTube ads. Mm. There, people are really good with Facebook ads, but when it comes to YouTube ads, like, it's very, very rare to find a company that's really good with YouTube ads. Yeah. Grammarly is one. Monday, if, 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 if you know what that is, is another one. Yeah. But most companies just can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. So we make videos so that companies can run them as YouTube ads. So if you think about like Squatty Potty or Poopery, yeah. those commercials, that's the kind of ads that we make. Yeah, the Harmon Brothers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was them. And then you guys, so you guys are very similar to, to that business model. Exactly, exactly. Right? Yeah. And then how does that work for you? Do you charge up front? for the ad or is it like a percentage or how does it work? It depends at the beginning. We were, um, at the beginning we were charging $30,000 plus like, uh, 60 or 75 on the back end, depending on performance. Okay. Um, now because we have more clients coming to us just organically, um, and through referrals, um, we do, we do 60 
up front and then 30 based on performance. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. And then, so you guys have a creative team then basically right yeah. now. So that's your whole company is just like directors, you know, music people or whatever it is. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. And then you do you also handle creative direction or no? Yeah. Mostly on, on the script. Okay. Once the script is done, like I'm pretty hands off. Okay. Yeah. And are you the main, the only guy doing it? Like the, the owner or do you have partners? Um, it's still under the same company. Oh, it's is, still under jump, jump cut. cut. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Gotcha. So all the investors are still invested in this company too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's cool. So like if you make a return, then they're still going to get some. Only if we exit. Only if you exit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So even if we make like a hundred yeah. million dollars a year, but if we were, then I, you know, that is a hard the business. Right, to, the right thing to do would be to pay them back. That is a hard business to exit though. I feel like, right. Cause it's like based on it's almost your creativity. It's almost impossible to exit right? as an agency. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's based Unless on. Unless you get like aqua hired by another company. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, man. Um, so how's that going right now? Is that doing pretty well? Yeah. Yeah. It's doing decently. Yeah. Um, we just made an ad for, uh, for Yada. It's a banking app that okay. Ram Stefan, uh, invested in. Oh, coincidentally. Yeah. And, um, they're doing pretty decently. And yeah. then, um, we're also launching our own product now too. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Tell uh, us about that. Yeah. Called sweet painting. So basically you take a, a painting that is like a famous painting, like Michelangelo's, yeah. you know, um, uh, you know, the one where he's touching God like this yeah. and you can put your face on it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then what is people just buy that for like their friends or something like a yeah. gift? Yeah. yeah. So the, the ad, yeah. The, the reason we wanted to do that is because we just had a really good idea for for the ad, <laughs> which is like yeah. this grandma saying, I love sending nudes <laughs> to, yeah. to my friends, to my family, to my grandson. Yeah. Um, so we just made that ad and uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's just, it's one of the ones that I'm very proud of. Is it running now? It will run literally okay. in four days. Oh, nice. Yeah. And yeah. this is going to be on YouTube, right? Yeah. Maybe you can show it on here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it runs, we'll, we'll, we'll show it. Yeah. Sure. So it, it, uh, yeah, we just, we just had such a great idea for it that we're like, all right, let's just launch this product. Yeah. Ourselves. That sounds, yeah, that sounds good. All right, cool. So I think we went through like your whole like kind of career, right? Did we miss anything career wise? You think anything interesting? I was going to ask you some like dating questions. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. The good so, old days. So like, so, okay. So you've been doing the simple pickup stuff. Like you're pretty much a dating expert in a way, would you say? Sure. Sure. Yeah. What, what was like the most interesting thing you discovered about, you know, women and dating in those years you were doing like simple pickup? So... I think there's two things. Number one is the the less shits you give, the better. Right. Right. So it's just like, like when I was talking about the whole like Miley Cyrus pickup lines thing, yeah. you know, you just say a pickup line and yeah. say, can I have your number? And they're just totally cool with it <laughs> because it's just like, that is the just absolutely not giving a shit. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people will hear that and then they'll overreact to not giving a shit and be like, yeah. oh, I don't give a shit. Fuck you. Be all <laughs> macho and stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. Right. I'm talking about like truly deep in your soul, like not giving a shit about what this person thinks of me. Mm. So if you can get there, however you can get there, it's, it's a long journey. Right. For me, it was years, right? So if you can get there, it just opens up an entire world of possibilities for you. Mm. Um, so that's number one. And then number two is, um, you know, a lot of people talk about intelligence as in like logical intelligence. Right. There's emotional intelligence too. Mm -hmm. And I actually didn't realize this until I took this, uh, until I took a uh, boot camp for founders actually, where uh, they, they, they teach this at, at Stanford Business School. It's mm -hmm. called interpersonal communication, but it's also called touchy-feely. Um, uh, they basically... They they they, it, it, they taught me that sharing your emotions is not a weak thing, right. right? Talking about your emotions is not a weak thing, and I'm sure you know as well. But in Asian families, we don't fucking do that, right? Right? Like we don't talk about Never. emotions. Yeah, if you feel sad, it's like sweep it under the rug, like fucking deal with it. So I always thought, as a CEO and as a man trying to get women, that showing emotions was a weak thing, right? And so. Um, this is why I never had a girlfriend for like 10 years. Uh -huh. Cause I was like, oh, like this, this, this sappy shit sucks. So I went through this program and, um, I was crying for like two days straight, dude. Oh wow. I was crying for two days straight uh, over like your past history. Like you were thinking about stuff or no, it was just like, they, 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 I don't know how much info I want to go into. It's, <laughs> it's a long story, but basically, but, yeah. but basically 
you know, when I started sharing my emotions with people, yeah. it felt good. Right. Right. It felt good for me. And then other people validated that by saying, hey, when you share your emotions with me, it feels good to them too. Mm-hmm. So then I cried because I was like, man, my whole life I've been living thinking that sharing emotions is weak. Right. And I've been missing out on these connections that I could have made uh, beca- because of that. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was crying, right? Like right. These, these, these connections I could have made with my mom, with my dad, with my friends. Right. Like I missed out on all of that. And so going back to your question with, with the pickup stuff, that's one of the most powerful things I've, I've learned uh, is when you not just talk to women, but talk to anybody and you share your emotions, it's really, really powerful. Mm. Um, so, so when people ask me now, like, how are things going? Um, if we're, you know, if it's a casual conversation, whatever, I'll say, yeah, it's great, whatever. But if we're having lunch or something, I'll tell them like, you know, I honestly, I feel a little bit anxious today. Or the last, oh, well, the last month I felt, I felt a little bit anxious to be honest. Yeah. Right. And just kind of sharing those emotions with people Yeah, or, um, or, uh, just telling your friends, Hey, I've been thinking about you and I miss you. Right. Yeah. Um, j- like things like that are extremely powerful and people I think overlook it mm-hmm. because I don't, I don't know about everybody else, but for me, I always thought it was a weak thing. In, in the dating context, does that get a little like too much? So for example, I feel like if you're a guy and you're like just oversharing with like this girl, like your emotions, it can get too much. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I So if yeah. you're just talking to someone at a bar, I wouldn't say I, I was feeling anxious the last month because I had to lay off my employees. <laughs> well, not even, okay. even a girlfriend though, right? Or what do you think? No, no, no. I just, okay. I completely disagree. Okay, so I think w- when you have a girlfriend, yeah. you have to share those things. Yeah. Because otherwise it's, it's like people keep it inside yeah. and then it builds up and then all of a sudden now you guys are fighting. Um, Okay, okay, what about like in like a uh, talking stage? Yeah, so okay, so let's just say, this, okay. this is how you use it in like the real world. Let's say okay. I meet someone at the bar, right? Right. Um, and they tell me a story about, you know, something funny or cool that happens. Um, instead of saying, oh, that's great. You know, I would say, I feel very happy for you. Oh, interesting. Um, and happy okay. is kind of a generic word. I, I would even say like, you know, hearing that brings a lot of joy to me. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you shared that. So just, just a little bit more expressive of like yeah. how you're feeling. Yeah. Look, yeah. I, dude, I have a freaking, um, I have a, let me see if I can pull it up. I have this, this like emotions wheel that I, I like to use. Mm-hmm. Um, so anytime that I can't communicate something, I'll open this up yeah. and then I'll say, you know, hold on, let me, let me see. Um, so I'll say, you know, I'm very, I'm very proud of, of, of what you did there. Right. Or it's just like, I think that was very courageous. Right. And it's just like using these emotional words, it seems stupid, but it's extremely powerful. Yeah. I've noticed like with certain girls, like if you seem like if you get a little sappy, like they can't handle it. You know what I mean? Like it just feels like they're just not emotionally there to like receive it. Or they'll just be like, and this guy's like kind of a pansy. Have you noticed that with certain people or no? Yeah, I just don't hang out with them. God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, look, it, it just really depends on, on who on who you want. There's not that out. empathetic. Some of Yeah, these yeah, yeah. Like, dude, there's some people that oh. I know that are super surface level and like all they want to do is yeah. talk about work and all they want to do is talk about how cool they are and how successful yeah. they are. That's not human, dude. Like, yeah. If I'm your friend, I want you to tell me when's the last time you fucking cried. Right. You know, like when's the last time you like broke down? Like, I want to know yeah. these things because that brings us closer together. For sure. For sure. I think that's definitely, yeah, I, I like that a lot. It's hard because some of these people are like people you've known for years, you know, yeah. or like people that are like close in Un- a way. Yeah. Unfortunately, you that know? is the hard part. Yeah. And, you know, I think if something like this is important to you, yeah. which it is to me, and you can't have these conversations with those people, then maybe yeah. it's time that you reevaluate, do I yeah. really want to hang out with them? That's not to say like cut them out of your life completely. Yeah. Maybe instead of hanging out every month or every week, once a year, yeah. just get a drink or something. Well, I noticed like, like within like, let's say the um, rave scene. I don't know if you're, are you, you're in the rave scene a little bit? Or what no? is the rave scene? Like, I guess like people go to festivals and stuff. Oh yeah, I go to festivals. Like people are more open. I do drugs open. that's what you're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> people are more open. Like if you're taking Molly, like people are more open to like emotions and stuff. But then there's like certain people who seem to be very like closed off. And it's like, if you say like anything emotional with them, it's just, it's just, they can't process it. 
Yeah. You know? So it's just like, but I know a lot of people like that. Like a lot of Asians are like that yeah, too. Yeah. A ton of know? Asians are like that. So it's just hard. It's hard to um, find the right people to like be more expressive with sometimes. Well, for them, you know, you don't have to necessarily like go a hundred percent. Right. So you can say yeah. something like, um, instead of saying like, man, I love you so much. You can say like, you know, yeah. Uh, like how, how are you, how, how do yeah. you feel? When's the last time you had a negative emotion? Right. 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 Like, um, tell yeah. me something that sucks about your life right now. Yeah. And then that, that they kind of reveal themselves that way where, you know, now they're opening up and saying like, yeah. you know, what sucked was my boss fucking like said, fuck you to me and whatever, whatever. Yeah. And now they're opening up a little bit. So there's gotcha. ways to do it. That's not just like, you know, kind of have to over, like, take overwhelming. it slow. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the reason why I asked this is cause like I'm dating this one girl right now. And she uh -oh, just seems. Should you say this on on the? On the I don't, oh, she's not gonna watch an hour in. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Yeah, but like, so I'm dating this girl right now, and she's like, I just feel she's very emotionally a little cold, like a little bit more on the sociopathic side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Like she's so logical, like she's almost uh -huh. like a dude in a way, like yeah. where she's like just so much on the logical and like. Anytime, like, I bring up anything that's slightly, like, emotional or, like, hard to, like, talk about, she, mm -hmm. like, kind of freezes up. Yeah. Have you noticed? Have you had that happen or, or not really? I mean, I used to be like that. Right. I literally used to be like that. Right. So. And then what was the solution? Well, I went I went through that. that the therapy. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the four-day, like, Retreat. intensive program. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think those, those people, you need to figure out, look, how important is this to you that yeah. you, you emotionally connect with them like this? Yeah. And, um, if it's not a big deal, that's fine. You can yeah. continue with it. But if it is a big deal and they're not kind of moving toward the, 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 the side that you want to be on with them, mm -hmm. then, um, you know, maybe talk to them about it and then reassess, Hey, is this something I want long-term? Interesting. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So, okay. So beyond relationships, I know yeah, you're I said, I said, I love you to my mom for the first time, like in 15 years. Oh, wow. Last year. That's crazy. Yeah. It, it was, yeah. It was, it was nuts, man. Yeah, um, I had a moment like that, like, <laughs> dude, I had a moment like that with my dad, actually. I said, I love you to my dad, but then he just said, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't, I, I would not expect my parents to react yeah. in a way that, yeah, yeah. like, they, they're just old now, but yeah. I think they appreciate it when you do it. Right. But they just don't know how to react to they it. They can't react, like they're Asian, yeah. they're old Asian parents, they exactly. can't really, they don't know how to react to that stuff, yeah. but... I mean, but it doesn't really matter. Like it wasn't, I didn't expect anything from that. Right. Yeah, so yeah. it was totally fine. So, okay. So I think we talked, okay. You're in a relationship right now, right? Yeah. Like at what point were you ready to kind of like get into a relationship? So I think after kind of coming to this realization that I want that emotional, um, connection with, yeah. with, with people, um, I seeked it out with my friends first and with my family yeah. Um, and then I think probably a year and a half after that, I, I said, hey, this is kind of what I want in a relationship, too. Because mm -hmm. before that, it was just like the longest relationship I had was like two months. Right. Right. So I, I don't even call that a re relationship. So you were just like hooking up with chicks, basically. More or less. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then more or less. Yeah. See, th the one thing about that that I never understood was like if you're just hooking up with chicks, uh. Like, why not just keep them around? Like, what was it just you wanted the variety? You just wanted to, like, switch out girls? Or what was, like, the impetus for no, I that? No, I think once things got serious, I pushed them away. Oh. Because, okay. I, again, it was just like, I don't want to be weak. It was like a two-month thing, and then you were just like, oh, yeah, this is getting then, serious. And then, yeah, once we hang out too many times, it's like, all right, I don't, I don't want this. This is too serious for me. <laughs> okay. And it's almost like I pushed away yeah. these, like, really potentially deep emotional connections with people. Gotcha. Um, so that's what happened with me. But, yeah. but I think that during that time, um, yeah, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't say that these people I dated were perfect for me, but yeah. I would definitely give them a, a better a, chance. Yeah. A better chance and, and get to know them more. Gotcha. Yeah, and I think I, it, it, it kind of sucks that I missed out on, on connections with really cool people yeah. because I was just scared of being weak. Right. Right. And then, so would you just say like the, for relationships, it's just, you need to be, you need to have two people that are emotionally at the right point, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, at the end of the day, you just, you, you make a list of things that are important to you. Yeah. So that's one of the things that's important to me, um, is being able to 
express your emotions clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's like a non-negotiable for me. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. On a more shallow level, <laughs> how, do you, what's, how do we start picking up chicks, dude? <laughs> like what's the, wait, how, how, okay. So let's, let's take it step by step, right? Like, let's say I'm a guy, no prospects. I might be like, let's say I'm an Asian guy, kind of a loser. What do I do? <laughs> Why does Asian guy have to be a loser? <laughs> <laughs> no, because this is for Asians. This podcast okay, okay, is for okay, Asians. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's like two separate points. Yeah, Asian I'm just guy being, I'm and just a being, loser. I'm just being very specific. Okay, you know, okay. like I'm just a typical Asian guy, no dating prospects. Like, what do I do? Um, I think, I think, okay, so I'll give you two, two answers. Okay. One is surface level and then one is kind of like deeper level. The surface level answer is, just get out there and meet new people, right? right? Like you don't, it doesn't have to be like strangers at a bar, although I do recommend that because it builds your confidence. Um, but it could be like, all right, if you're into, I don't know. Um, anime or something? Anime, yeah. Yeah. Go to like an anime meetup, go to an anime convention, you know, join Facebook groups. Yeah. Um, and then, so, so that's the number one. And then just make friends and be a cool guy. Yeah. Like, once you are a cool dude with like friends, people just come into your life that yeah. that it, it, it makes it so much easier. Because, okay, so for you guys, because I remember in one of your earlier videos, like you guys were not cool at all. Like you were not cool dudes, right? Like when at the beginning. Sure, yeah. Right? And then how did you become cooler? Was it just through just what you just said? Just interacting with more and more people? I mean, I think I think that question is kind of flawed. So yeah. the, the word cool is subjective. Right. Right. That's like true. what is cool? Yeah. Everybody has a different definition from it. And I think bec- if you ask it that way, it's like, how do I become cool? Yeah. You're like trying to reach this thing that doesn't exist. Okay. I think the better question is how do you just accept yourself for who you are and just mm. love yourself? Like, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like find out your identity, what you like, what your interests are, and just love that about yourself and not be afraid to express it to people. And then find people Once that, you do that, oh yeah. I believe that you are cool. Right, yeah. okay. And then I was just gonna say like, and then find people that resonate with that version of yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, exactly, exactly. Because like, I know like, an, like, for example, there's like anime nerds or whatever, and then they might not attract that many girls, but then there's a specific group of girls that like, like anime and that would actually like them. Oh no, dude, there's a huge group of girls that like anime. Right, exactly. So, I think there's, my, my thing is, okay. Yeah. If there's what seven billion people on Earth, yeah. um, let's just say in in the U.S. there's three hundred yeah. million, four hundred million people. There's whatever it is you like. There's at least a thousand, ten thousand yeah. people that like that too. At the very least, right, right. That's yeah. in your age range, and 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 you know. And anime is more popular now, but like back in the day, like it was like super nerdy. Like I was an anime nerd. Back Dude, in the day. What's back in the day? Like, like 10 2000 years ago? and no, no, no. Like I was like anime nerd back in like 2000 and like three. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. Like back then, like anime was like very few girls, at least in the, that I knew. Like this was like probably like middle school or Have something. you been to Comic-Con? Yeah, I've been to Comic-Con. Yeah, now I know there's a lot. Okay, okay. Yeah, I've been to like Comic-Con and, and like Anime Expo for sure. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. there's tons of like hot girls at those places. Yeah, yeah but like back then... Like you, yeah. Didn't, I don't that know about 2003. That. I wasn't into that at the time, but yeah. okay, I get it. But like the the anime club at school, for example, was like the nerdiest of the nerdiest. And then no, you know but what I mean? but but 2003 is different because right. now we have the internet and everybody's on it. Right. You know, um, trying to figure out or not yeah. figure out, but like they're on it, expressing their interests with other people. Right. Like we didn't have Reddit in 2003, but totally. now we have Reddit. So anybody who likes anything can find a subreddit. Yeah. And, you know, find people who are interested in the same thing. Right. So now all of these subcultures, it's like, it's kind of cool to be in these subcultures. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think it's different in 2003. You're right. Because mm-hmm. it's just so hard to find those. Like if you were yeah. into, I don't know, um, dressing up with wood on your head. Like <laughs> it's pretty hard to find that, but I'm sure there's a subreddit for right. that right now. <laughs> right. So, um, and I'm, there's probably meetups for it too. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. But um, yeah, so so that's so that's the surface level. Um, the 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 surface level answer is to 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 be able to meet new people, mm-hmm. build a social circle, and just hang out with people. Like, don't yeah. try to, like, I think everybody when they think about pickup, it's just like, how do I fuck? How do I fuck? Yeah, it's just like, all right, just focus on just being a cool person. Right, and build your network, and build your network. Yeah, once that happens, and you're just like 
a, a fun guy to be around, like people will come to you. Yeah, no, totally. I've actually experienced exactly that. So my whole thing was never to like go out and pick up girls at bars and stuff. My whole thing was just like try to make as many like cool people, influential people as I, I can and then build like a cool network. And then from there, you just naturally find connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you think don't if you even, just try to be friends with people, yeah. that is the best way to do it. And then um, either one of your friends is going to be really cool and then you guys... Yeah make something out of it or maybe they're not or they're not for you they're not the same the, the right person for you sexually or romantically but mm -hmm. they'll introduce you to other people oh yeah totally like yeah. you're talking about like female friends and stuff yeah yeah exactly yeah 100 <laughs> and then what's the that was the surface level and what was the other level so oh yeah so on a deeper level um i, I think we kind of touched on it already but yeah. it's just being able to to understand what you like and be very comfortable with it okay right so I can tell you, right, like, like, um, you should be able to identify traits in other people that you don't like. And you say, hey, look, I don't really appreciate that kind of trait. So I'm mm -hmm. not going to be friends with them. If you can't do that, I think it's very hard for you to appreciate yourself. Almost. Yeah. So um, I'll give you an example. One of the things that, that I really, really dislike is people who are people who are rude. Mm -hmm. right so anybody who's who's rude to me or my friends or anything like that like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be your friend right so let's say you know you brought a friend over and he said um yo dude your place is fucking ugly <laughs> not not like sometimes we right. bust each other's balls that's fine right. but if if there's like a rude tone to it and i know he's not joking yeah like i'm gonna be like i don't like that guy right so that's a non-negotiable for me and i think um when 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 it comes to pickup people always think, oh, I got to fuck, I got to fuck. And like right. they, they lead with their, their dick instead of their mind or their heart. Yeah. Right. And it's like, you have to be able to understand what you like or don't like about somebody to, uh, to, 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 it's almost counterintuitive, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like, all right, well, aren't I going to miss out some of these people right. because I'm like blowing them off? But no, it's yeah. not. You're, what's going to, what's going to happen is you're going to alienate some people but you're going to find the people. It's it's really easy for you to connect mm -hmm. to the people that you really appreciate. Right. Yeah. Right. I do. I do find that um, a lot of times, like with the people that I really do appreciate, and then I kind of show, like I really like them. This is like for girls, for example. Yeah. Like, it kind of backfires sometimes. Like it's almost like I'm showing too much, and I'm like being too much. Have you? experience that or do you think i'm just like finding the wrong the wrong person Wait, what's an example like if i'm too nice to some some girls like if i'm just like being kind of like a simp <laughs> you know what i mean yeah i mean yeah. i'm not really being like that simpy but like for example like like i think with this last girl i was like very um like i was very willing to uh be exclusive right away yeah right and then but then that kind of backfired because then now then she like kind of lost interest after that <laughs> yeah i get it so yeah. so so there there definitely has to be some um calibration yeah um so i don't know the specifics of that particular interaction right, right. maybe it might be that you were in the right but she's just some someone who's very like insecure defensive or something yeah non-committal or whatever Who knows? Maybe i think that was i think that was the case for that girl but yeah, yeah yeah um but i think at the end of the day if if you're doing something that you believe is is what you want. Yeah. Um, and somebody doesn't like you for it. Yeah. Then that's their loss. Right. Right. Totally. So I don't think you should adjust the way you handle it just because you want to make them happy. Now gotcha. there is, there, there is a fine line. Like, you know, if you're into some really kinky shit, you don't bring that up r like on the first date. Right. Right. But you kind of slowly ease into slowly it. Slowly ease into it. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, so, so nowadays, okay, so with pickup, right? Because back, back in the day, pickup, I think, was a little bit bigger. I mean, especially now with COVID, it's, like, getting a little bit more dead, yeah. right? Is is that even a good method anymore? Or is it, because, like, a lot of people use online dating now. Yeah. Right? Do you think it's, like, do you think pickup is still alive and well? Or what, what's your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, I always tend to, to, to like it better because with online dating, people are judging you based on your looks, right? Right. And so for me, look, I'll be honest. I'm not the greatest looking guy in the world. <laughs> Dude, you're right. famous, bro. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. But I was like, okay, on a scale of one through 10, 
I'm probably in the lower half. <laughs> like, let's just be honest. So, yeah. so I think um, when you're doing online dating, it could be good because, right. um, you know, it's really easy, very low effort. But there are a lot of people who would really love me in reality that doesn't get yeah. that part of me. Right. Once they see your confidence and like how your vibe and everything, yeah, they'll yeah, like exactly. you a lot more. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, you don't know how many girls I've 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 been with that are like, man, I've never had sex with an Asian guy before. <laughs> right. So right. it's like, and the reason is because, uh, unfortunately, you know, Asians just have like a reputation of being uh, I don't shy know, or whatever. Yeah, shy, introverted. Um, it's it's kind of like emasculating, in, at least in the media. Yeah. So I think that kind of transfers over to the real world a little bit. So when you're do, going on Tinder, when you're going on these dating sites, it's like, okay, a lot of Asian guys will only match with Asian girls. Right. Um, but that's because they have, and it's not their fault, but they have these inherent biases that make them say, hey, I'm yeah. going to swipe left on this guy or whatever the rejection side is. Well, the crazy thing is now Asians are getting way more popular too. Asian That's true. Dudes. Yeah, which which I really like with yeah. uh, the Shang-Chi and like <laughs> K-pop and all that stuff. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I think it's getting better. It's definitely um, getting way better. Yeah. Like all my friends who are using online dating now say like it's just night and day, especially in like the metropolitan cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, totally agree. I, I don't know if in like the Midwest might still be the same, but in like New York, LA... Probably, probably not as good as New York, LA, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. I think, I think the more progressive areas are, are, are kind of are their, their mindset, my mindset is, is shifting. Gotcha. Um, but unfortunately, there is still kind of like that inherent bias yeah. that is there from you know years yeah. ago or how, however they grew up thinking yeah. about Asians. And then, so before you got your girlfriend, were you most, were you still kind of picking up girls and that was your main way of like getting girls or was it like through your social circle, like you were saying? Just through social circle. Yeah. Gotcha. Just friends of friends. You knew there was girls that would hit yeah, on you. Yeah. I think, stuff. I think, um, with, with pickup, it was, it was very rare that I would go out and just meet like random people. Oh, it was? Yeah. Um, why is that? Since, since I started jump cut. Cause oh. I was just working. So yeah, since when I started, when I did jump cut, there was like, no, I, pickup, I yeah. was working probably, you know, 80, 90 hours a week. Gotcha. So there was no time for joy really. So it was back in the simple pickup days that you actually went out and picked up girls. And that was when you met a lot of the girls. Yeah. I think that was mainly how I met people was, you know, gotcha. through, through, through pickup. Yeah. Through pickup and, and, and cold approach interactions. <laughs> Dude, it's so, it's so crazy. Cause I, I almost feel like that's, so um it's hard to be efficient with that like it's almost like the time to the time ratio is is inefficient no or I mean, it depends on what you want right because i like when before i was doing it to get content yeah well yeah get content <laughs> but also like i i enjoyed doing it because it improved my confidence it, it was almost yeah. like a workout almost mentally yeah. you know it improved my confidence and it 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 you know, was just like a, it was almost like a challenge that I wanted to do. Right. Um, so yeah. Is it efficient in terms of the time to getting dates <laughs> ratio? Not really. If you compare right. it to like online dating. Yeah. But did it, you know, was it beneficial for me as a person to grow? And it was really, yeah. really beneficial in that sense. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause, cause I think you're a little bit different because you had to kind of do it. Like you had to go out and practice and you were forced to essentially do it for your mm -hmm. business. But for the average Joe, it's, I think it's almost, it's kind of a different story because they're not necessarily going out and picking up girls as much as you. So they're in like the in, in person interactions aren't as good. Right. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is like to be good at like in person pickup, you have to like devote a significant amount of time to it. You can't just like randomly go out and like one, one time a week do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't really look at it that way though. Yeah. So, so I get what you're saying and I do right. agree, but I think the way I look at it is you shouldn't go out and just like try to pick up girls, but it should just be like a thing that you do. I'll give, I'll give you an, an example. Um, so if I go to Starbucks, right. Mm. Regardless of whether the girl is cute or not, if they're wearing something interesting, I'm just going to make a comment on it. Oh, interesting. So it's just like, I'm starting conversations with random people everywhere I go. Gotcha. Um, and that's like, you know, before I would never do that, but yeah. now that's become a part of my personality. Right. So, um, so, um, that's know, huge. I, that's yeah. a huge piece of advice. Yeah. Actually. So I was at a wedding, um, one time and then the, the hotel like cashier person, um, was talking to me 
and uh, I noticed her tattoo. Mm-hmm. I said, yo, that's a bomb ass tattoo. Where'd you get that? Oh, cool. Let me follow the artist. Cool. Like how long did it take? You know, like, yeah. what, like we're, we're, we're just making small talk. And um, obviously I was still with my girlfriend at the time, but <laughs> If I right. were single, that could easily have been like, look, you're, you're, you're pretty cool. Let's go get some coffee. Right. So the, the thing I think people get wrong about pickup is that they're just like, all right, I got to go and pick up girls today from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Yeah. And it's like. That's why a lot of people do it. That's how I used to do it, too. Yeah. But you don't need to do that. Like, just start conversations with people mm-hmm. everywhere you go. And inevitably, you're going to meet someone cool that also thinks that you're cool. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because I because I guess the way I thought about but, but pickup, it, all, it all, yeah. sorry sorry to interrupt, but it yeah. also goes back to like knowing your interests too, right. right? Like if you don't know what you're into, like uh, you, you you're really into anime, um, yeah, it's hard for you to have those deep connections because yeah. it's like all right, I have no interests, right? So you can't talk about anything. But as soon as someone talks about like EDM, yeah, or anime or you know production because I do a lot of like, like cameras for example yeah. and lighting like I can go on for hours about that right because that's that's what I do that's who I am holy totally. yeah gotcha gotcha so finding out your interests and then tailoring the girl to like your interest almost like where to find them yeah yeah and because I'm into tattoos I'm, I'm in, yeah. into to, to artists mm-hmm. like I can talk about that for hours too so right. if anybody has a tattoo on them like that's an instant connection for me gotcha right and it's yeah. like hey have you checked out this guy have you checked out this guy I love this guy's work yeah. and then now you have that connection and you can you know see yeah. if there's like a spark that comes out of it yeah it just sucks because like these guys because, like, going back to the loser Asian guy example, like, a lot of these guys just don't have any interests. And that is, like, the big problem. Like, so they just have to get some interests. Yeah. Almost, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a hard that's, step. Yeah, I think that's why the whole pickup industry is weird because it's all about, like, this, like, external thing of, like, yeah. tactics you can do. But, like, <laughs> it sounds so cheesy, but at the very core, it really matters that you love yourself and you yeah. understand yourself. Like that yeah. is literally the most important part. And if you don't do that, no matter how many tactics you have, it's like you're never going to be truly happy with mm-hmm. the romantic relationships in your life. Totally. Totally, man. Dude, yeah, I think that's a great overview of the dating stuff. Is there any like dating stuff that I should ask or what do you think? Um, did you ever, okay, did you ever have a period where you were like just dating like a ton of chicks like but like together at the same time? You know what I mean? Like mo- like a roster? No, no. Oh, you never had a roster? Yeah. Yeah. I've never... Like a Dan Bilzerian type I mean, simple pickup roster. <laughs> no. Th- okay. There were like a couple occasions. I wouldn't... I wouldn't call it like a roster. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it was like... It was super... Ca- yeah, it was like super yeah. casual things that maybe there was like two or three people that I was seeing. Yeah. Um, I can, I can remember one time for sure. But... Um, yeah. Cause there's these fuck boys in LA that are like just going through, like, I know one of my friends on online, he, he has like, like a rotation of like six women, which is crazy to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, dude, how are like, like just for managing that many girls is like a, a, like a full-time gig. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. 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 Like it's crazy. You know what it is? I've, I've never really cared about it that much. Yeah. It's like, okay. Having these relationships with women and having sex is important. Yeah. But it was always like the number five or six important thing to me. Right. It was never the number one. So it's like, I just don't care enough to, to, to yeah. like set up something like that. I feel like yeah. that would just be a distraction. <laughs> to every- a distraction. Yeah, it's just a distraction to everything else I'm doing. Yeah. Plus like, I feel like having the one girlfriend is like already pretty good in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it's like, it's, it's good to just have like that one like deep connection that, you know, like every time I've had a girlfriend has always been way better than being like trying to date and stuff and being single. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think at least at this point in my life, it's, it's an incredible feeling to just be able to connect with somebody like that emotionally every yeah. single day. Um, yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, if, if I was 21 and you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. in college, sure. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Like I, I get it. You can go do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, dude, man. So what, uh, I think that'll conclude the interview. Like, and what, uh, what do you want to plug anything in particular? I mean, we already talked about your whole career, but, um, you can go to sweetpainting.com. Sweetpainting.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you want to show the ad, you can, it's, it's awesome. I think, I think I'm very proud of, of, of the script. Dude, yeah. We'll wrote, show so. the ad. We'll throw the, we'll throw the ad in there. Yeah. 
free of charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be a brand deal, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Awesome, dude. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. That was awesome. Love being here.